This week, we once again explore the mind of Argentinian director Damien Rugner as we delve into his 2017 movie, Terrified. And when it comes to the Argentinians, I am indeed terrified. And by delve into the mind, I mean delve into the literal nightmare fuel that this man continues to create as someone seriously needs to ask Damien, are you okay? And I need to ask, how do you be smelling? Because thanks to today's sponsor, you could be smelling pretty good. I know you're already looking super cute, so why not make you smell great as well? Today's sponsor, Scentbird, is a flexible monthly fragrance subscription that for only $17 a month allows you to test out designer fragrances. And something that I've learned is that smelling good benefits you and literally everyone around you. You can smell like nothing, you can smell bad, or you can be the best smelling person in a room. And to achieve this, it's as easy as checking out today's sponsor Scentbird to ensure that you can smell your absolute best while also taking regular showers. Don't forget that part. With over 700 options and a variety of unisex options, Scentbird offers fragrances from the likes of Gucci, Prada and Versace, as well as indie labels like Skylar, Heretic, Confessions and Rebel to ensure that they've got the perfect premium scent for you. Once you sign up, you get a 30 day supply of your chosen fragrance, giving you the perfect opportunity to decide if it's the one for you without having to spend upwards of $300 on a smell you don't even like. So if you're interested in smelling as good as you look, make sure you use my code WILL for 55% off an already good deal, bringing that down to just $7 for your first month, available across all of the USA and Canada. So once again, big thank you to Scentbird for sponsoring this video. The movie begins with a horrific sight of a woman. She starts to hear voices coming from the drain because that's what the government want her to do. The woman named Clara tells her partner Juan about the voices, but instead of saying that she's just having a typical woman moment, he tries to have a listen for himself. But after not hearing the voices, she tells him that the ghosts of the unwashed dishes are telling her that they're going to kill her. And that night, while trying to engage in the pastime known as sleep, Juan hears banging coming from his neighbor's house. And going to confront him for having a good time without him, he hears weird noises coming from the PA system because this guy's got some issues. But when he comes home to tell Clara about the banging that their neighbor Walt has been doing, he once again realizes that he's been left out as he hears the noise once again, but this time coming from the bathroom. And as he enters, he discovers that the sound is actually his girlfriend's skull repeatedly smashing against the walls because hammers are overrated. She's either finally discovered that gravity is just one big scam or something unseen to the human eye has lifted her up from the ground and started killing her. So after Juan does a little cry and Clara's brains are turned into soup, Juan's held in a psychiatric hospital, as most people generally don't condone the smashing of your girlfriend's head. They just need to open their minds on the topic. Sometime later, and he's met by three people who believe his story and know of similar cases around the world of other gravity deniers. He's asked by them if anything strange has happened in the neighborhood leading up to the incident, with him mentioning his neighbor Walter with the unusually high sex drive. Walter, who we see as played by Damien Salomon, the same person who played Jimmy in Damien Rugner's latest movie, When Evil Lurks, and we see from Walter's perspective leading up to the incident, where he's been dealing with some situations of his own, which can only be described as not very good. Like being haunted by a serial redecorating ghost who constantly moves his bed because he thinks it'll look better over there. The uncomfortable sight of a bald man would appear beneath his bed while harassing Walter due to his fear of follically challenged men. Because of this, Walter would get little to no sleep as he'd be tormented constantly all through the night, and on the occasion where he'd actually manage to get some sleep, he would wake up to the sight of his room being turned completely upside down with things seemingly moving on their own. It's like Toy Story, except with more trauma. Walter's been trying to contact a doctor who specializes in the paranormal, but a secretary refuses to put him in contact with her unless he's able to provide her with evidence. So after attempting to recreate paranormal activity, but Latin, he wakes up in the night to see the camera on the floor, as well as a shadow suffering from a really bad case of Parkinson's. After watching the footage back, he's greeted by the sight of a large naked man standing over his bed and staring at him while he sleeps, much to the horror of Walter, as he hasn't even bought him a drink yet. After this large naked man in another male's bedroom proceeds to quite literally enter the closet, Walter realizes that he must still be in there, so grabs his gun to shoot him for having a larger dong than him. But after opening the closet with the intent of killing a man for the horrific crime of being bald, he finds nothing in there apart from his dusty ass fashion sense. There's absolutely nothing there until there isn't, as he begins to emerge from the closet to finally shoot his shot and grabs the 
the gun. Things start to escalate between Walter and his new roommate, as the next day, when a little boy attempts to drink from a tap in Walter's front garden, Walter tells him to get away from the house, causing the boy to walk backwards into the road and getting a free bus trip out of it. Days later, after the boy has been buried, we learn why cremation might be the best option, as his mother Alicia hears the sound of something outside her house at night before discovering muddy child-sized footprints. It then cuts to one of the men who we saw in the psychiatric hospital with Juan, Hanno, a paranormal specialist, called by his police commissioner buddy Funes to the house, causing him to walk into Alicia's kitchen to be absolutely horrified. No, not because he's in Argentina, but because the boy who was just buried is sitting at the dinner table with a bowl of cereal and a glass of milk. With this not being the only film by Damien Rugner, where the paranormal is an established and known thing in the world, with the exact same thing happening in When Evil Lurks, with it being something that people just know and understand. And after questioning whether or not the mother had retrieved the body herself, Hanno examines the boy's fingers and establishes that he spent the last several days clawing his way out of the dirt. And while they're not looking at the boy, he proceeds to knock over a glass of milk because he's lactose intolerant. Disgusted by the sight of a small child, Hano recommends that they rebury the boy, but this time covering his grave with concrete to ensure that he stays in permanent timeout. And while leaving the house, we see that Hano meets another person we later see in the psychiatric hospital, Dr. Mora Albrecht, an expert in the field of paranormal and the person who Walter has been trying to contact. I guess she got so tired of Walter constantly calling her, so came to take pictures of his house to show him who's boss. Realizing that there's something more going on here, Hano takes Mora back to the house to show her the boy, as we see that one of his school friends climbs the back wall to retrieve some of his toys, and when Hano and Mora are out of the room, the little boy walks up to the glass door to see his dead best friend sitting at the dinner table. And after knocking on the glass to get his attention, the boy's head starts to slowly turn towards him. After running away because friends are gross, the boy proceeds to secretly film Hano and Funes as they transport the body into an outdoor freezer to save him for later. Later. It then loops back to the present day, with the paranormal investigators accompanied by another professional known as Rosentock as they're visiting Juan in the hospital. They want him to authorize some papers, to allow them to stay in his house for a few days to analyze the paranormal events, and because it's much cheaper than an Airbnb. With his neighbors already handing over their approval, Juan agrees as well. Hanno, being a fan of little boys, is staying in Alicia's house, Rosentock and Funes in Walter's house, as we learn that Funes uses a hearing aid and takes medication for heart problems due to coming off the factory line defective, with Mora staying in Juan's house. We learn that Walter has actually been missing for some time, making it slightly questionable as to how they received his approval to stay in his house, and Rosentock and Funes discover cutlery floating upwards towards a cabinet, with one of them stabbing Rosentock in the hand, giving him a cool new piercing. And after hearing slurping noises, they realize that there's something inside of the cupboard that's sucking up his blood, as apparently this house is haunted by bug chasers. Funes watches as things start to move around by themselves as they're sliding up and down the walls, before they both discover the creature beneath Walter's bed, as that's what happens if you don't throw out your cum sock. After being terrified by the sight of a bold man, Funes attempts to run away and enters Alicia's house looking for Hano to find that he's attempting to become a piece of IKEA furniture, with him being inside the back of a cupboard with glass in his eyes. Funes goes to tell Mora about Hano being a little bit of a weirdo, and finds her sitting next to a crack in the wall that leads to Walter's house. A crack in the wall that creates another crack, but this time on Mora's skull, as a hand reaches out from within before slamming her head into the wall. Funes seems to be suffering from a heart attack because he couldn't hold it in like a real man, as he sees the creature begin to emerge from the wall. But the heart attack, nor the artistic rendition of me, manages to kill him. So taking this opportunity to leave, he tries to do just that, just as Alicia arrives at the house looking for him him, as she's seen the video of her treating her son like leftovers. She thinks that he was trying to have her placed in a psychiatric facility with all the other fun people, but after he attempts to explain to her that that is not the case, she agrees to drive him to the hospital, but he denies her offer after seeing her little boy in the back seat of the car, despite his grave being covered with concrete because kids are annoying and he'd rather die. After getting in his own car to commit a DWCA, driving while cardiac arrest, a really flexible Mora suddenly comes running out of the house and towards him, shouting that they're all being torn tortured, and that there's still time to stop this. But not liking to be told what to do by women, he proceeds to fix it his own way burn it all to the ground. After retrieving canisters of fuel, he starts dousing Alicia's house with a fresh new coat, because screw the other houses I guess. And while inside, he discovers the little boy, causing him to pour a little extra. He never did like kids. After finding Alicia hanging about, he decides to give her an impromptu cremation, before trying and failing to light a match. 
Something is controlling Hano's body with his cool new contact lenses, and it keeps blowing out the flame, causing Funes to channel the average American and shoot it to start the fire. After the events of that night, a year passes, and we see back at the psychiatric hospital as Juan's met with another group of people, but this time they want to talk to him about Funes and the group of paranormal investigators. No one knows what happened to them, and Funes is now a wanted fugitive due to being seen burning the houses down because apparently you're not allowed to burn down residential homes anymore. So I guess he did manage to burn the other houses down with the power of his gun before Juan points at something behind the men. He says that it's Rosentock with a burnt face. Strangely, a chair begins to move on its own before suddenly it flies towards the camera and the movie comes to an end with absolutely no questions being answered. So before we bring this video to an end, I'd like to just give a massive shout out and a big thank you to all of the YouTube members and patrons, the people who go out of their way every month to continue help supporting the channel, which is something that I greatly appreciate. If you're interested in becoming a YouTube member or a patron yourself, not only are you just generally being a great support, but you get access to a few little cool bonuses, like being able to join the private Discord server, where you then get links to all uncensored versions of videos going forward. So starting off with this week's new YouTube signups, a massive thank you to Sean Carrion, Relacos, Hakinen, Jodhard, Picasso1122, Oaf2011, Mr. Angry Pants, M. Living Good757, Todd Aroni, him, and Jonathan Hall. And heading over to this week's new Patreon signups, a massive thank you to Heinz Flo, William Corsay, JP Talk Too Much, Lisa Jervis, Ricardio The Heart, Moin Moin, Riley Q. Kendall, Rude, Crude, and Socially Unacceptable, Astral Goddess, Christine Vega, Waffles, Watsi, Lucas Rubio, Mario Collar, Doctor That's Nice Diddly, and Justice Fry. So once again, a massive shout out to all of the YouTube members and patrons, and a big thank you to everyone else for watching. Once again, thanks to Scentbird for sponsoring today's video. Make sure to check out my link below.